check it out. That is sleet. Yeah, that's what we deal with in Northern Illinois in the spring. But here in the greenhouse, oh yeah, looks like spring in here. We are about 60 to 70% full in here. Give it another two trucks, two more weeks, and it will be so full in here, there'll be no room on any of the tables. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am Michelle. I own a garden center in Northern Illinois. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm so glad that you decided to join us. This is spring in Northern Illinois. Now, if you've tuned into my channel, it's because you want to learn about gardening, and that's what our channel is all about. So this morning, it's pretty cold outside. It was just supposed to rain, but we ended up getting sleet. So it actually, I missed it, but it was on the roof and it was sleuthing off uh, the roof and just coming down in big glops on, into, the land, into the garden beds uh, on the other side of the, of the roof. It stopped now, so it didn't last very long and that'll all be melted, but this is what we've been dealing with all spring long. We had one week where it actually felt like spring and it was in the 80s and it's been in the 40s, the 50s. We've had cold temperatures at night. Hopefully it's I say this, <laughs> I've said this like once a week for a month. Hopefully spring is going to get here pretty quick or it's here. I didn't see any uh, freezing temperatures in the 10 day forecast. So we're hoping that we can get out and get some more things planted. If I had to guess, I'd say right now we're about three weeks behind where we would normally be in the planting season outside. I have planted seeds and other things and I know they're okay, but they're kind of just sitting there. They're not really doing anything. So we're going to hope that we're going to get a little bit of a warm up because they really need that warm sunshine to get going. So today what we're going to do is we are going to continue our super pot challenge that we are doing. We're doing up 12 container gardens and I'm going to do four more recipes today. I did four in the first video and I'm going to do four more today. Now these pots we will actually have around the property or at my house, one or the other, and you'll be able to see these grow from the time that we put them in until we take them out in the fall or we uh, maybe upgrade them to something different in the fall and maybe change a few things out. So you're going to see what we do, how they're progressing. We'll show you the recipes so that if you want to duplicate them at home, you can. And then we'll be feeding them every 10 to 14 days with a water soluble fertilizer to make sure that they get all the nutrients that they need. So don't forget when you're doing your container gardens and I'm going to wear you out on this. One, you need drainage in your container. Two, you need to use potting soil. And three, you need to feed them. They say on the little feeding containers, you know, once a week, I think if you can go 10 to 14 days, that's pretty good. But even if you only do it once a month, you need to feed them because the more they grow, the more they're going to use those nutri nutrients and they're going to need those nutrients. So let's get started with our next four recipes. And my hair got wet from being outside. <laughs> but you know what? We do gardening in all kinds of weather. So even though I can't put these pots outside yet, I'm still going to plant them. And if this is something where you can't plant yet, you could still plant them up, keep them in your garage. That way they start to get a little bit bigger and you get a little further ahead. So let's start with our first pot. And these are going to be pots that I'm going to actually put in the moon garden that we will be putting together a little bit later once the weather gets nicer. So moon gardens are created in an area where the moon is going to shine down on it. Don't put it in a place where if the moon's shining, you know, it's underneath a tree and it doesn't even have the impact you want. Now you can create it with artificial lighting throughout an area, but I like to do them where the moon is actually going to create that light for me. A lot of times we can't enjoy our gardens because we're not home. So we uh, work during the day and when are we out in our garden? We're out there at night. So moon gardens has become pretty popular. We have a whole section in the store where we have moon gardening plants and accessories and pots and all kinds of things that you can do to create a moon garden. Whether it's just a, a little area on your patio or it's a place in the ground in a designated area in your yard, uh, a moon garden is a really beautiful thing. It's a lot of whites, a lot of silvers, but you can use accent pieces, glow in the dark pieces, all kinds of other pieces to accent that as well. So we're gonna be creating two pots. I already did one in an earlier video and I'll show you an update on that. It's been just sitting in here growing. Uh, but I have two more white pots that we're going to do and this time uh, I'm going to use white pots and the whole thing is going to be done in white and silver. So we're going to use our spike as our centerpiece. So here's our spike and the spike, you know, they can get, it depends on the size of the pot, 24 to 36 inches tall. And so Sometimes they'll grow to the size of the container that you're putting it in 
and sometimes they'll stay smaller if you put it in a smaller container. Another one that we're gonna use is we are gonna use the Hello Chrism. This is the white licorice. This is absolutely gorgeous, and it's got that beautiful silver foliage on it, and we're gonna kinda put it in the center of the pot, right in front of the spike, and it's gonna grow through everything that we put in the pot to kinda break up the green and the white. So I think this will be absolutely beautiful. All right, then we're gonna use a scavola. This is a fan flower, and what I love about these, they come in blue, pink, or it's like a dark purple, I don't know, in, in the gardening world, blue, they call them blue, but they're mostly purple. Um, but I like the white, and so what I love about the fan flower is you don't have to clean them, you don't have to do anything, you just kind of plant them and grow, and they grow. They need full sun, and they need six plus hours of sun every day. They're gonna get six to eight inches tall, uh, they spread really well. I've never planted them in the ground, but I plant them in pots all the time. I like them because they're super low maintenance. So if you're looking for a low maintenance flower, this is definitely one to look at. And then I'm also going to be using the Proven Winners, and I'm going to use the Mini Vista White. And so this is the white that I'm going to use. So I'm going to put these four plants in one pot, just four plants. And this is going to be two that we're going to put out in the Moon Garden. So let's go ahead and get these planted. So I'm going to go around to the other side of the table. I totally went the wrong, <laughs> I totally went the long way. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to go all the way around all this stuff. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we have our pots. They already have drainage in them. We have our potting soil that we've already kind of put in the pots here. And I'm going to remember to put in my flower tone. I know that I forgot to put it in one of the pots and I did go back and fertilize that just so you know. So I'm going to put about a half a cup in there. I'm going to mix it in. Oh, and again, I am using the flower tone from Espoma. You can use Biotone too. Uh, it works in a pinch. I use both. It's kind of whatever I have on hand. I think those two are kind of interchangeable when it comes to my annual pots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spike and I'm going to put that in the center and I'm going to actually plant two pots and I'm a little bit offset on this. I'm back just a smidgen so that I can put that helichrysum right in front of it. All right. So these pots here are not that big. I would say that these are, these are 10 inch pots. <laughs> Sometimes I look at them and I think they're 12 or I think they're 10 or I think they're eight. I'm not quite sure. All right, now the Proven Winners, the Mini Vista White, I'm gonna put that off to the side. And then I'm gonna put the Helichrysum in front of that, if I can get to it. Come here, little guy, let me grab this one. And again, I'm gathering all my tags so that I know where they are. Okay, I'm gonna drop this right down there. And then I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna put the fan flower right here. And then I'll backfill. And then this one will be ready to go. Okay, so my, I didn't get that quite in there anchored very well. So as you can see here, I kind of got the spike in the center, and then I have got the helichrysum in front of that, and then on either side I planted a fan flower on one side, and the mini vista white on the other. So then I'm going to backfill. I'm going to add my tags to my pot so that I remember what I put in this pot, and these will be going out. Woo, there it went. These will be going out to the moon garden. And so I'll plant this one up in just a second. I wanted to show you the plant uh, that we did, I think it was a couple weeks ago. We planted up the first one for the moon garden. Here it is, and we did this one. So this is how this one is doing here. So this one we did the salmon colored. They got a white edge on it, a geranium. Again, we used the proven winners mini vista white and you can see how the flowers have started to kind of grow and again we used a helichrysum in this one as well one on each side and then a spike in the middle so kind of they all tie together because they're all going to go in the same garden uh, together when I get ready to put the moon garden together I'm coming here I am okay so I was just going to show you this one close up okay so you can see this one here we've got the helichrysum here our spike is right here and then we've got our fan flower here and our mini vista white petunia here. Isn't that great? So these are going to look fabulous in the moon garden because the light of the moon is going to make them glow. That's what it's supposed to do. I've never planted a moon garden, so this would be my first time. I'm hoping that I love it. 
I do spend a lot of time in my garden after work. So thus the moon garden. Okay, welcome back. So now we are on pot number two. Now this pot number two that I'm gonna do, we are creating an area outside that is an inspiration to like a water-wise Mediterranean garden. And so when you think Mediterranean gardens, if you've ever gone over there, herbs are a big one. And so they have herbs like lavender, rosemary, thyme, oregano. They kind of grow in the cracks of the sidewalk over there. They are those herbs that want to dry out in between waterings. So I thought that I would create a beautiful pot and I'm going to use these, these two pots here. Ah, there they are, but I thought I'd get on the ground to do them because they're a little heavy to lift up on the table. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a rosemary here and this is the torrentius and it's going to get 24 inches high it wants full sun and these pots are going to want to dry out in between waterings so i thought that i would oh and you know what i got to get fertilizer before i forget and then i'll get a gazillion comments you forgot you forgot so let me grab those i'll be right back <laughs> okay so here we go i'm actually going to use biotone this time I'm still only gonna use about a half a cup, even though this container might seem like it's a little bit bigger. The roots are still gonna be at the top part of this pot, so that's where they're gonna feed off of this fertilizer. So that's why I wanna make sure that I just put it, you know, I don't have to get it all the way to the bottom because my roots aren't down there. And if I put it all the way at the bottom, when I water this, it's just gonna wash out the bottom. So being at the top of the pot is really where you want it to be. Okay, so there we go. It is fertilized. Okay, let's kind of center this. Okay, so I know my little rosemary is kind of little right now, but it will get bigger, okay? So the nice thing about this pot is I can go out and I can cut off of this pot and use the rosemary in it if you're making this pot at home. And I need a little more dirt. I'm just gonna be up and down, sorry. Add some to this one. And I'm only going to plant one of these for you, and then I'll plant the other one when I'm done. Okay, so here we go. Now we've got our rosemary in the middle. And then the other thing I'm going to plant is lavender. Now this is a Goodwill Creek lavender. It's going to get 18 to 36 inches tall. So I'm actually going to plant two of them, and I'm going to put it in the back of the pot. We are going to put these on the patio, and I have like a faux fireplace out there that we built out of brick, and we just use it for aesthetics and I'm gonna push them up against either side of the mantle uh, on the, the, I guess it's called the hearth when it's on the ground and the mantle when it's up above. So the hearth, and we're gonna put the two pots on either side of that. So here we go, this is a Goodwill Creek. Now Goodwill Creek is an English lavender and I've never tried to grow this one in the ground here afterwards. It's, I buy it in the herbs. Um, and I usually put the, the hit coat or the Munstead um, in the ground as my English lavender, but I will try to plant this one at the end of the year and see if maybe we can get it to transplant. So that's the other thing is, you know, sometimes I like to put things in my pots that I can pull out and use later. So I am gonna put two lavenders in here and I'm just gonna put them in the very back of the pot right behind my rosemary. So. I know that these have the same watering requirements. They like each other, so they're gonna do pretty good in the pot. Now, one of the things that I wanna have, aha, uh -huh, I want flowers. I want it to look beautiful, so I'm going to be using these Super Bells. This is a Calabracoa. This one's called Holy Smokes. Look at the flowers on that. Isn't that gorgeous? The white and the purple, and then it's got a little bit of the yellow in the middle. But lavender, when it comes out, is like, or it's lavender. So I wanted to have a complimentary, maybe a little bit darker color with this. Now, remember I said how if you're not sure how to put a color scheme together, grab something that has multiple colors and then you can find the match to go with it. <laughs> so we are gonna plant this lantana. This is called the Luscious Royale Lemon Tart. This is also by Proven Winners. This is gonna get 12 to 26 inches high and the Calabracoa is going to get eight inches high and so uh, spacing is, or I'm sorry, six to 12 inches high. And so I'm gonna put these in the front and these alongside, so I'm gonna do it like this, and I'm gonna plant four of them in this pot. So this will be in the front, these will be in the side, the rosemary will come out the top, and then the lavender will be in the back. So this will be a beautiful color combination. And what I love about this is Lantana wants to dry out in between waterings. And if you watched my, what's the difference between a petunia and a calabracoa? 
Caliber Coas want to dry out in between waterings too. Because if you overwater your Caliber Coas, you'll start to get yellow foliage on here and they don't like that. And it's either that you're overwatering them or you're not feeding them. So more times than not, we try to put Caliber Coas and Petunias in the same pot. They don't like each other. So again, I like to put the Caliber Coas totally separate from the other things that I'm planting. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to go ahead and just take this out. I'm going to plant these right in here. Get my other one. Again, this is the Super Bells. Holy smoke. And I'm going to be planting up two of these pots and they're going to be side by side out there. I've got my two lavender in the back. Now I'm not going all the way to the back uh, of the pot with the luscious royal lemon tart. I am actually planting them at like three o'clock and nine o'clock. That way my lavender has room to grow back here. And I gotta make sure I make my hole deep enough here. All right. And the other bonus is butterflies love lantana. So they will come. And if you plant some of the darker colored or the red or the pink or the purple, I don't know if the hummingbirds will come to the yellow one, but they will come to the other ones. So I love that. So there we go. I've got those in here. And then I've left room for my lavender to grow back here. And again, I have my dirt about a quarter, half inch, quarter inch below the lip of the pot. Let me back it up here. Kind of lift that up so you can see that. Isn't that gorgeous? I just think that this is going to be a spectacular pot once it's done. Okay, so that's pot number two. Let me go get ready for pot number three. Okay, pot number three. Okay, now this one is a new pot for me. I've never done this one. I want to create this soft, romantic looking pot. And so I'm going to use a terracotta pot. And I'm just going to show you some of the tricks that I do with the terracotta pots. Now, terracotta is uh, not glazed. It is still baked clay, but it's not glazed. So when you're using terracotta pots, if you're in zone six, probably or higher, you're going to have to empty your pots out in the winter, turn them upside down in your garage, or there's a good chance that they could crack. Now, I'm going to be using an eight inch pot here. And one of the things with terracotta is it will wick the water out of the soil. So you either need to do things that are drought tolerant or you need to be willing to water a lot. Now what I do is these are the plastic bags that come, or they're not bags, they're sleeves that are hanging baskets come in, but you could use a plastic bag uh, in a pinch and then just cut some holes in it. And But I like these because see how they already have the holes in them and they already have an opening in the bottom. Now, the terracotta pot has a really super big opening in it. So I actually forgot the coffee filter, which is way over there. So let me go get it. I'll be right back. Okay, coffee filter. Okay, so I put the coffee filter in the bottom of the pot and it still allows the water to flow through. But instead of like putting a rock there with, that might plug the hole, um, I'll use the coffee filter and that will allow my water and everything to still drain through but my dirt won't be coming out of the bottom and I end up with a black spot under my pot. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sleeve here and I bet if you went to a garden center and you asked them for one I would give somebody one so I would hope that they would too but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it in here like this and then I will trim the edge of this when I'm done and then I'll have this plastic barrier between here and my terracotta pot in the hopes that it's going to help hold some of the moisture in the pot and not wick away so fast because I am putting this in a part sun location and I want it to do well so that means I'm going to have to watch it. The other thing is it's a smaller pot and that means it could dry out faster too. So I'm going to fill my pot with dirt, add my fertilizer and then we'll go ahead and get the next one planted. So let me grab a scoop and I'll start filling. All right I've got it almost filled up now. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is, ah, I'm gonna add my flower tone fertilizer. And in this little pot, I might just add maybe like a third of a cup. I don't need a lot, because again, remember, this isn't your fertilizer for the whole season. This is just to get it going, okay? It's organic, so it's not gonna burn the roots. I'm gonna mix that right in there. All right, now, in my video, what's the difference between a petunia and a calibrachoa? I talked about petrichols. Petrichols are the, both, the best of both worlds in that they self-clean and they are a cross between a calibrachoa and a petunia. So we are going to grow one so that you can see how it does. Now in a pinch, if you don't have these in your area, you could always use a petunia. Okay, so I'm going to plant this in my pot here. And again, you only plant it as deep as it is in the pot. Don't forget, if the roots aren't root bound, you don't have to break those all up. Just throw it right in the pot. 
Then I'm going to use, oh, and so this Petrocol is called Sunray Pink, and it's going to get 10 to 14 inches tall, and it's going to be a draper that's going to come over the side of the pot. Then I'm going to use this beautiful zonal geranium. This one is called Light Pink Splash, and so I love that this one has that beautiful soft romantic pink, and then it's got those darker pinks in the center. It does have a little bit of white in the center, so I just think it's this nice, soft, romantic. When I think of pink geraniums, I think romance. So that's what I'm going for here. So this one here is going to go in my pot. And if you go to the garden center and let's say, because you know, everybody's been going through a little bit of stress right now. If you see leaves like this, it doesn't mean the plant is bad. It just means you need to pick them off. Because guess what? When you grow things, sometimes you have to pick the leaves off too. So I just pick those right off. Now, when you're growing geraniums, they are one of those flowers that you're going to have to deadhead. So when the flower is spent, you're just going to follow the stem down to the bottom and then just bend it. It'll snap right off. You want to do that with your geranium so that it's not wasting energy on this dead flower that wants to go to seed. And you want the other flowers to produce faster and you don't want that energy wasted on this. Plus, it doesn't look good. So just snap those off. So I am creating a little bit of work for myself, but I'm okay with that. So again, I'm going to try and plant this guy more in the center of my pot. And the next one I'm going to use, I'm going to use another fan flower. If I'm going to give myself a maintenance flower, I'm going to give myself a no maintenance flower. So this is the Scavola. This one is blue violet. And so unlike the other one I used that was white, this one has that beautiful blue color. And again, they self clean. You don't have to do anything to them. Um, and they'll do well. Now this pot's gonna need at least six hours of full sun, okay? And so I'm gonna get that in there. And then the last item I'm gonna use in this one, and this is what's gonna help me create a little bit of that romance that I'm looking for, is I'm going to use a white edged ivy. So this one here is called Glacier. It's pretty common. You can probably find it at all the garden centers. But what I'm gonna do with this is as this pot is growing, not only am I gonna have it trail a little bit, I'm gonna work it through uh, this planting as well. That way I've got this beautiful soft foliage that's going to work its way through the whole pot. All right, so this is number two or number three, and I'm doing it in terracotta. Let me finish backfilling, clean up the plastic, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to finish backfilling this one. And then all I did was I just went and got a pair of scissors, and I just take it and I trim the plastic around the edge of the pot throw this part away, and then I can just tuck that plastic down in there, okay? Just tuck it down in there. And even if you don't tuck it down in there, once these plants start to grow, you'll never see that. Okay, so now this one is done. Isn't that gorgeous? I think this is gonna be so soft and pretty and romantic. I can't wait to start training the ivy through it and just, oh, I just can't wait. This is gonna be so awesome. Okay, I am now on my very last pot of the day. This one is going to be my budget pot. So this is for somebody out there who, you know what, you want a big, bold, spectacular pot, but maybe you don't have a lot of money to spend. And this is also gonna be one that you can put in the shade. So I plant this pot up every year at my house. I actually plant four of them. And when I plant that, I end up using all of the proven winners when I do these. This one today, I'm gonna to be using the Color Blaze Velveteen. These things are fabulous and you only need one. So this is actually, if you have the pot and you have the potting soil already, this is actually a pot that you can probably do for under 10 bucks. That's good for doing a, a pot that's gonna give you big impact. So I'm growing this for foliage. Now these can handle a little bit of sun. I would say if you're gonna plant this, it's gonna be in morning sun. I'm gonna pair this up with a six pack of petunias, or not petunias, uh, impatiens, because this is gonna be uh, something that's gonna get filtered sun through the day but for the most part, it's gonna be in the shade. So again, I'm going to use one of the Velveteen Coleus. Now I do have a taller pot here because when you plant Coleus, they are your big centerpiece pot. And if you're in a shorter pot, they kind of look misproportioned. This will not get the full 40 inches in a pot, but it will get probably up here. It's probably gonna get a good 28 to 30 inches and it'll fill this pot out. And what it ends up doing is the, the impatiens grow and it ends up kind of pushing them out and they'll kind of almost look like a trailer, but you'll have all these beautiful pink flowers at the bottom because I'm gonna pair it up with the Amara Purple, which has got this nice dark pink bloom. Those two together are gonna be beautiful. And that's it, I'm just using these two plants, okay? So when you're on a budget, but you wanna create something that's beautiful, 
this might be the way to go for you because you can really get some great impact with this. Okay, so again, I'm gonna add my fertilizer and that's the end of my bag. I did a lot of pots with this. Um, I actually did more than what you saw me do with that bag. I think out of that bag itself, I ended up doing close to 15 or 16 pots. So they do, it does go a long ways. Okay, so here we go. This is all ready to go. And I'm going to plant the Proven Winners Velveteen Coleus in the center of the pot. Now, what I love about Proven Winners and the Color Blaze Sirius and the Coleus is I don't have to pinch the flowers off. I don't have to pinch it to get it to branch out. I have planted this one before. I've literally just put it in the pot. And this is one that grows in a nice mound. So there's a couple of them that grow kind of on bracts or on, you know, individual stalks that go up and they look like groupings. But this one, just a nice mound. They're more drought tolerant and heat tolerant than some of the other coleus that are out there. So this one here, I'm going to plant it right in the center of the pot and it will fill out this whole pot. And I know you're tempted to put more stuff in here, but you don't need to. This will fill this pot, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my impatience, I'm gonna pop them right out of here, and I'm gonna plant them in twos. I'm gonna put two right there. So I'm gonna kinda go like a third of the way around. I'm gonna plant two right there, and I'm gonna plant two right there. Now, if you feel the need to plant in a little circle, and that feeds your soul, go for it. I know that these will fill out just fine the way I'm doing it. And so I'm gonna do two, two, two. This is a pot that you're gonna see from all directions. And when you're doing a pot like this, I don't know that this is a great looking pot to have the big center here and just three quarters here pushed up. I really do think this pot looks the best seen from all directions, but you could certainly try to put this in the back and put the impatience in the front. So see, that's it. And this will, it will fill in. It's going to look absolutely gorgeous. You just wait and see. All right, so those are my next four pots for my Super Summer Challenge. This one, again, is a shade pot. We've got the Romantic pot. We've got the Water Wise pot. And then we also did, what was the other one that we did? The very first one. Oh, for the Moon Gardens. So we've got four different styles that we did. They're going to go in totally different places, serve totally different purposes. Hopefully, this was inspiring for you to go out and plant some of your own. Uh, I, again, later in the season, I will set it up so that you can submit your pots to me so we can share those with everybody. Those are going to be absolutely great. I can't wait to do that. So that's all I got for today. Keep on gardening. I'm Michelle with the Landscape Connection. Don't forget to subscribe if you love our videos. We'll see you in the next one. Bye now.